Welcome to workshop 13 on data structures and algorithms. The topic for today's workshop is heap data structure. The objective of this workshop will include a definition of a priority queue. We'll also talk about the heap data structure, looking at the marks and the main heaps. We go further to implement a heap data structure using linked data structure and one dimensional array. We we'll also look at the applications where we we'll implement priority queue using a heap data structure. And we will use a heap data structure to implement a certain algorithms. Start with priority queue. So a priority queue is an abstract data type that supports the following operations. First, if an insertion is to be performed on the um, on the on the queue, each of the elements must be associated with um, a priority. And for any element to be deleted from the queue, must have the highest priority. Then what is the difference between the priority queues and uh, the regular queue or the stack data structure? The main difference is that it's similar to both of them, but the main difference is that in priority queue, each element is associated with a certain priority. Now, if we want to uh, implement priority queue using an array, and uh, we first want to store it in a linear list, we need to have each of these elements associated with their corresponding priorities. Then um, the efficiency of inserting an element into a priority queue is of the order of one. But the efficiency of removing an element from a prior queue is of the order of n. This is because when we want to perform this uh, deletion or removing an element from the queue, it requires us to search for the element within the list. And uh, while performing the operation, we end up, we may end up searching through all the nodes before we can get the element that we are searching for. And that increases the efficiency to the order of N. So what we do to reduce the complexity for us to increase the efficiency or improve the efficiency rather, uh, we have to introduce the heap data structure. So a heap data structure is ordered binary tree and then um, it's also a binary tree that is complete you remember in the previous lecture we introduced a complete binary tree and then this binary tree for instance is complete rather it is not anyway it is it's not full but it is complete it's not full because these leave elements are missing or it is complete because in all levels, starting from this level to the last level, all the levels are full and all the levels or all the leaf nodes are full starting from the left hand side towards to the right hand side. So uh, for the max heap, so the max heap has this, um, principle that all the element at the root node must be um, greater than all the children nodes. So if you have a look here, you see 66 is greater than 45 and uh, 66 is also greater than 38. If we consider this sub three, 38 is greater than 32 and it is greater than 12. 
So it, this implies that even the children nodes or the subroots must satisfy the heap properties. So the heap can be converted to mini heap, sorry, the max heap can be converted to mean heap. And uh, what is the difference between the max heap and the mean heap? The, max, the mean heap is um, literally can be said to be the inverse of the max heap. This is because in a max heap, the root node is always the largest number, but in mean, in mean heap, the root node is the smallest number. So if we convert these to, if we convert this to mean heap, we're going to have a structure that looks this way. If we go back to the previous slide, the minimum number is three and the largest number is 66. So we now have to remove 66 and replace it with, ten, with three because three is the minimum. And when we perform the operation, we have something that looks this way. This is the minimum or the mean heap. However, we will see how we can perform the operation in subsequent slides. Now let's look at performing insertion in a heap. We can perform insertion following these steps. First, we have to insert the data that we want to put into the tree to the bottom leaf of the heap. So under the insertion must be done um, to the, towards the left side of, I mean, we have to start from the left si hand side of uh, the leaf node. And um, at times we might realize that the level is full and we need to move to another level in order to insert the element that we want to put into the, the binary tree. And uh, on performing the insertion, we might also realize that the element we inserted might destroy the heap property of that tree. And when that happens, we must have to perform a kind of a restructuring operation to restore the tree to um, the heap property that it has lost. So how do we restore the tree? To restore the, the heap property we, uh, when uh, inserting, we have to move the data that we have inserted and move it up to the root or to a position where uh, the, the element will be such that the parent will restore the property of uh, the heap uh, uh, the restore the heap property. And uh, such operation is of uh, the efficiency of the order of N. Now, we're going to discuss these steps in subsequent slides. And let's look at what we mean from what you have just said. Now we want to insert an element 17. So where do we insert the element? Remember, we have to first of all, consider space where we can insert the element. So first thing is that the element must be inserted at the lowest level. And this is the lowest level. So then the second thing is that we insert from the left towards to the right. So if we start from the left being here, this is occupied, we move to the right and the only space we can insert is this place. So this will be the position for us to insert this uh, element 70. So now we have inserted, then the first question we need to confirm is that the first question we need to ask is to find out if the heap property is still maintained. Um, then yes, the heap property, uh, sorry, the, comp the the tree is complete, is still complete, but the tree 
is not having the property of a mass heap. This is because we have 70 at this point and 70 is greater than this, is also greater than this and greater than this. But heap property says that the highest number or the element with the highest value need to be at the root node. So we need to perform operation uh, to ensure that this element being 70 is moved to the root node. And why until that is done, this structure has not restored the properties of a max heap. So our priority now is to move the 70. And how do we move the 70? We swap 70 with the parents node and consider these two elements. We swap again and consider these two elements. Then we get to the point where our operation is complete. So at this point, this um, tree has been restored to max heap and the operation is going to end here then what is the efficiency for inserting in a heap? What is the efficiency? What do you think is the efficiency? Well, the efficiency is dependent on the height of these three. And because it's dependent on the height of these three, the operation is going to be just um, based on the height. And, uh, uh, the efficiency is going to be the big O notation of the order of log N. Now let's look at how we can remove an item from um, a heap. So in order to remove an item, so yes, we have to look and find the item with the highest priority and uh, uh, is, is uh, the item with the highest priority is always the item at the root node. So in this case, uh, the item that we need to delete or remove will be the one at the root node. And uh, if we delete the item, we we'll also have to perform operation the kind of moving the, the subtrees to a, to a point that the heap property is restored. Now let's use this as an example. So this is the heap, this binary tree that we have. So which of these nodes do you think is the right one to be removed? The right one to be removed is 66, which is the root node. The reason is because it's the one with highest priority as far uh, for max for max heap. So if it is the mean heap, then the minimum element will be the one at the top. So, but in this case, where we have the max heap, the the element to be removed is the one with the highest priority and 66 is the element with the highest priority. So what do we need to do at this point? We need to um, remove 66. And when we remove 66, we are now left with some complications. The complications are that um, the the tree are separated because on removing these, we have 45 subtree and 38 subtree. Another problem we will face is that we have to restructure these to restore it to max heap properties. So what do we do? The first thing we will do is to look for the node that can replace that node that we have removed. Um, the reason we do not have to choose the node at the extreme left is that if we take this node at the extreme left, then this three will not be complete anymore. But if we take the node at this point, 
then the tree will still be complete. The only thing we now need to do is to reorder the tree, to move the elements in the tree so that they will rest, they will, the tree will be restored to the max heap properties. So we replace 66 with the value 30. And um, now it is complete, but the, it is not a max heap. So the next is to make it a max heap. So how do we go about making it a max heap? Now, for us to make it a max heap, we have to perform some operations. And what kind of operation is that? We have to look at this mark, uh, the root node and compare it with the children nodes. So at this point, we can realize that 45 is larger than 30. 30. And uh, at the same time, 38 is larger than uh, 13. So how do we decide which one to swap with 13? Then the, the, for us to decide, we have to compare these two sub root nodes. So um, the two sub nodes are 45 and 38. And 45 is larger than 38. So we have to swap it with uh, 30. So if we perform the operation, 30 will move to this place. And this side of the tree is completely settled. But at this point, this 30 is still is, is larger than 20, but it is smaller than 35. So we still need to perform an operation at this point in order to make the tree uh, max heap. So we're going to swap 30 with 35. So this is what we're going to have. And at this point, we have restored the heap property of the tree after removing an element from that tree. Now, the question is, what is the efficiency for removing an element from a tree? So now, um, from what we have seen, we can also see that the efficiency for removing the element in this tree is of the order of uh, log n. Now, if you compare it with the previous one, the priority that we had in either uh, slide three or the thereabout, we remember that the priority at that the for removing an element is of the order of n. But in this case, we have the efficiency for removing an element in heap, reducing to the order of log n. Okay, so at this point, we want to perform operation. Uh, we want to represent the heap using an array. So how do we represent this heap using an array? The best way to approach this is first, approach them level by level. Then while approaching them level by level, you start from the left. What I mean is this, if we want to represent this element, these three in uh, an array or using an array, we start with the root node, on the root node, you only have, at this level, we only have 66. So we record 66. So the next element is going to be the element from the second level. And we start from the left. So the value is going to be 45, we record 45. Then the third is going to be 38 because it's still on the same level, we record 38. Then we come down to the next level, which is the left, the third level, and we have 20. So that's how we keep recording until we get to the last level. So these are called the indices of these elements. And um, if you look at this place, you see that this leave node is missing. This and the other leave node are also missing. 
And that is the reason we have these three spaces empty. So how do we index this? We can index in these elements using their index number. In other words, I'm trying to say that we can identify these elements using their index number. So the index number for one, for 66 is one. So if you are writing a program, you can retrieve this 66 using the index. Uh, at the same time, for index number for 17 is nine. So likewise, others, you can use the same pattern to retrieve your data. Now, apart from having the index number from one, we can also represent the index, num use the index number to find the relationship between the parents and the children nodes. What I mean is you can find the relationship between these parents and the children, which are 45 and 38. So what this also means is that if we are not, if we're given a root node, for instance, this node, and uh, we don't know the value that's supposed to be here, but we have the indices provided for us. We can use the value of, um, sorry, we can use the index number of the parents node or the grandparents node, um, the parents node anyway, to find the value or the index number of the child node. Let's see what I'm trying to explain. So for instance, if you want to find the index number of the left child, that will be equal to the index number of the parent times two. So we don't know the index number of this, which is the left child, but we know the index number of the parent child. So if we multiply the parent child by two, we're going to have the index number of the child, left child node. Likewise, we can get the index number of um, the right child node by uh, using the parents node, saying multiply the parents node by two and add one to eight. So if we multiply this by two and add one, we're going to have three. The same thing is applicable at this root, at this node. So if we have this sub three, and we know that this three has, this node has the index number three, we can multiply it by two and add one to it to get the index number for the node 12. So if we use that of the parents, we can find the index number of the parents using the child um, index number. If uh, it could be directly or approximated. Approximated is, for instance, if we have to find the index number of this parent here, and uh, the, the index number of the left child is six, if we divide it by two, we're going to have three. But if we want to use the, um, index number of the right child, then if we divide it seven by two, we're going to have 3.5. So you approximate by just using the value three. So in some cases, we might want to start the index, start the index from zero. And if we start the index from zero, then the pattern we, fell, we followed in the previous process might not work. So we have to change the pattern to look like this. So the index value or number for the left child will be equal to the index uh, number of the parents times two plus one. So if we say two times zero is zero plus one is one here. Likewise, two times one is two plus one is, sorry, two times one is two, yes, I'm correct, plus one is three. So if we follow the same principle, you can get the parent index number for the right child. Now we want to compare 
uh, the AVL tree, display tree, and the max heap. Looking at focusing at um, insertion and deletion. So for APL3, most of the time, the efficiency is of the order of one. And then we perform rotation to restore the balance. And uh, if we want to perform deletion, the efficiency is also of the order of one. And we perform rotation to restore the balance. But for split three, the efficiency is always of the order of n. And they also perform the rotation to, re to, re to restore the uh, element. And uh, the same thing is applicable here. We perform rotation to restore um, the element to the best position, which is the root. Then on the heap, the heap is a bit different because the in the case of the heap, the first the efficiency is of the order of log n, and what we do is that we do some swapping from the root, and if we want to do delete, if we want to de delete any element, the efficiency is also of the order of n, and we swap to the bottom leaf. Now, if we compare again these data structures, focusing on um, some areas, uh, we can see that the AVL tree is a binary search tree. And uh, we perform uh, operation which look, focuses at uh, um, uh, balance factor to restore the tree to, no, to the uh, normal properties, to retain the AVL properties. But for that of play is also a binary search tree. And uh, most of the time the focus is on the most recently visited nodes. And the heap is not really consigned or focusing on if the tree is binary or not. The heap is focusing on the, if the tree is complete. So it's looking at binary, uh, complete binary tree, but it's not like looking at the search tree, whether it is a search tree or not. Then uh, so it also focuses on the relationship between the parent and the children nodes. And most of the time it depends, the complexity depends on the height of the tree. Now let's now look at um, implementing priority using priority queue using heap data structure. Um, from the operations we have performed, and um, <clears throat> excuse me, we can we can say that the heap data structure provides an alternative method to implement priority queue, and this is because the height uh, of a uh, tree is 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 the main concern, and um, the um, highest priority item is also uh, the main uh, concern of uh, the operation. So in this case, the both the insertion and the removal operation is of the order of log n. Now, why are they with the efficiency with, uh, at the order of log n? The efficiency is at the order of log n because we do not need to search through all the elements for us to uh, perform the insertion or perform the deletion. So it, also, it only depends on the height of the theory. Now, um, these are some areas where the heap uh, data structure could be applied. So one is for implementing a priority queue that's like using in Jigstra algorithms, um, which is used to find the shortest part tree in a graph. Um, this is not covered in the lecture, but it's available on the module. Another one is for Cruz Carl's algorithm, which is used to find the minimum spanning tree of a graph. 
It's also not covered in this teaching, but it's available on the module. And the third one is the Hoofman's algorithm, where, uh, is, which is used for compressing text. And uh, another area where this heap data structure is used is for sorting uh, algorithm, which is referred to as heap sort. This could be found in activity 10.4b. Now let's investigate how a heap data structure can be used for sorting algorithm. So for us to, um, okay, we have these and we have, you are, you are advised to think about how a heap data structure can be used uh, to sort a set of data. Then you can also use, uh, demonstrate this using uh, a card. So let's, let's have a look at some of the steps that you need to take. So for you to perform this operation, you first of all need to build a heap. Uh, in bracket, you can uh, use a heapify. Then the next step is to retrieve the, the root element. The root element is, is the largest element uh, if it is a, a, a max heap, but it should be the smallest element if it is a main heap. So when you've retrieved the root element, then the next step is to swap the root element with the rightmost leaf on the bottom leaf. So you remember that if we want to perform the operation, we always move from the left to the right. Or in this case, we have to swap with the element at the rightmost. The reason for swapping with the element at the right at the right most leaf is to ensure that at the end of our swapping the three will still be complete. Then we perform the sorting, then rebuild the heap without the previous root and perform, continue the performing until um, we have the data sorted. So in this case, what do you think is going to be the efficiency for the heap sort? The efficiency for the heap sort is still of the order of log n. Now let's look at more activities. The first thing on the list of the activities is um, for us to draw all possible max heap containing the four values one, two, three, four. So now we can perform this by first assuming that this is the first element. And if you have the first element here, we now have to check if this is heap max because there is no other element or child element to this root element, then we can say or assume that it is heap max. Then we move to the second element. We can add the second element to this place. So we have two, but is this heap, is this max heap? No, it's not because if you look at this, you see that one is not greater than two. So we have to make it max heap by swapping. So we have two and uh, one coming to this position. So now it is max heap. Then the third element is three. And the only space where we can add this because this level is not full yet is at this place. So we have three. Then we have to consider again, is it max heap? No, because three is greater than two. So what we need to do, we have to swap. So when we swap, we have three at this point and two at this point. 
then one at this point. Then we go back and pick the next element, which is four. Then where do we need to insert? Remember for our insertion, we have to start from the leftmost because if we add it here, then this three will not be complete anymore. Or we want the tree to be complete. So we're going to add it here and we have four. So uh, now the tree is complete, but is it max heap? No, it is not max heap. So what we need to do, we need to swap this and swap that. So when we perform that operation, we have four at the, at the root node. We have three at the uh, left child node. We have two at this point and we have one at this location. So this is one of the possible um, uh, structure of um, the max heap. I will leave the rest for you to uh, to complete following these steps that we just followed here you can uh, draw other possible structures of the max heap okay so the next question is is it possible for search uh, to search for a specified value in a heap do you think it is possible? I will I'll tell you what this will look like. I'll give you a clue. One thing you have to consider is it might be, it should be dependent on the kind of uh, uh, the heap. Is it max heaps or main heaps? So remember that in the max heap, the value at the root node is the value with highest priority. But for the mean uh, heaps, the value at the root node is the smallest value, which also should be, which also is the highest priority. So now, do you think that you can sort to find a specified, a specified value or data item? With this clue that I've given to you, I'd like you to try this and uh, respond during the tutorial section what you think about this question. Then the last question here is for us to investigate how we could convert an array of data stored in as arbitrary order in arbitrary order into a max heap. So how do we convert this array and then <clears throat> store it into a max heap? And then, um, sorry, convert it into a max heap. So um, I think our a another area we should be considering is this question, because we want the operation to be uh, less than the time it takes to create the array. So the time it takes to create the mass heap. So when we finish the operation, the efficiency should not be more than that um, you know, of the efficiency we used when we are creating a mass heap. Now let's have an example of what this can, or how we can achieve this. So assuming this is the value of the array that we have. These are the elements. If you look at these elements, you see that they are not ordered. So they are just arbitrary numbers. Then if we are to prepare a heap for this, we're going to have a structure that looks like this. So this structure is showing us that the first value is four, the index two is one, index three is three, index two, uh, four is two. And the following the order T we get to index 10. Now, how do we make this? First is that this three is complete. 
but it is not max heap. We are asked to make it max heap. Then, and at the end of making it max heap, we should also ensure that our time is less than the time it takes to create the tree. So what do we do to do this? What we can do is to think less about the leave nodes and consider the nodes, first of all, consider the nodes after the leave node or the level after the leave nodes level. So what I mean is this, if we consider these levels, we realize that this, at this level, oh, there's no leave node attached to it. Then we go to the second level from the bottom up to the top. So the second level is this level. There's no leave node attached to it as well. So we let it be. Likewise, this one. But 16 has a leave node attached to it, which is seven. Then we have to perform an operation here. What kind of operation do we have to perform? The operation that will make this a max heap. Now, for making this a max heap, we already have 16 here, which is greater than seven. So we don't need to perform any further operation at this level. So the next operation we need to perform is we move to the left, consider this level, which has element two. So for this element two, we compare it with the children nodes. So the children nodes two is smaller than the children nodes. Then we need to move one of the children nodes to replace position of two. So which one are we going to swap with two? The one we are going to swap with two is the one with the largest value. And uh, if you look at these two values, 14 and eight, 14 is the one with largest value. So we're going to swap 14 with two. So we perform the operation, we have operation that looks this way. Then we are all done with this level. Then we'll move to the next level. So the next level is three and two and one. So at this point, we compare three with the children nodes. So the children nodes are greater than three. So one of them must have to replace the position of three. And the one that we replace is 10. So we move 10, then we have this. So we have to move this, sorry, to get value that looks, structure that looks this way. So we now move to the next level, which is this one. We compare these two and realize that 16 should take the place because it's bigger. Then 16 we take here. And when one comes to this place, we can compare these two as well. Then one has, needs to come down, seven needs to go up. So if we perform the operation, we have one here, seven and 16. So we are done with this level. So the next level we're going to perform is the last level. So the last level we compare itself with the, the immediate children nodes. And the one with the largest number will take its place. So we're going to swap four with 16. So four is at this position now. When you compare it with the children nodes, we realize that four is smaller than 14 and seven. So we have to swap it with 14. And at this point, four is smaller than eight. So we need to swap it with eight. So lastly, we're going to have a max heap that looks like this. So finally, we now have a max heap, which is also uh, complete. And uh, this operation has reduced the complexity or the efficiency to the order of log n, uh, y, which is less than the, the time efficiency that we would have used to create the heap uh, uh, tree. Now, um, this is just some 
areas that uh, you need to cover in the in uh, in this workshop so we have some exercises for you to try your hands on and uh, also uh, perform some um, operations like uh, being able to create and maintain a max heap or mean heap you try your hands on the um, how to sort using heap sort. This is where we are going to end this section. Thank you so much and see you later. Bye.